put in sir yeah so today we are going so uh, yesterday i think the mock has been released right yes sir yes sir in day to over uh, so today it is uh, it got over so do you like to uh, like uh, uh, solve some questions from mock uh, mock uh, test paper uh, on week 1 and 2 because see i am i don't want to go with the summary uh, you know summary of week 1 and 2 because i think this is like very basic uh, summary is there so we'll solve some problems from week 1 and 2 uh, so that we can cover uh, one and two properly. Will that be okay? Yeah, or, summary, or, summary is also will be okay, sir. Sure. Summary, see, the thing is, uh, summary is already with you, and I think TA sessions also, we are having summary sessions there. So uh, I don't see a point uh, like where we can see this. So we'll cover most of the, uh, if you have any doubts regarding any concept, or related to any concept you just let me know we'll uh, discuss that problem uh, okay so or or else I, what i'll do is i'll just go through the questions in uh, mock test uh, for for from uh, like whatever the questions are there week one two three four uh, i'll solve the those questions and whatever the remaining questions are there we'll solve that into the saturday session and we'll take some okay. other uh, concepts from week three and four there on saturday mm, that will be good sir. right Oh, so okay so what i'll do is i'll start solving questions from uh, uh, this mock test and then uh, whatever remaining questions are there i'll try to com like complete as many questions as possible today and remaining questions will solve uh, in the saturday session as well as we'll uh, solve some questions from 3 and 4 because i feel week 3 and 4 is a uh, little bit difficult uh, week right yes sir uh, okay <clears throat> so let's start then uh, one more thing is, okay. Uh, I think the practice assignment solutions and grade assignment solutions for week one to four have been uploaded. So you guys can uh, just go and check there. Maybe you guys have the announcement as well. Right? Okay. So then, uh, we'll not waste the time, then we'll start uh, with the solution. Okay. So this is this is the question paper, right? Uh, I think how many questions are there? 13, 15, 17 questions are there, right? Okay. Uh, let's try to finish. Quiz one, quiz one will be two hours or one hour, sir? No, it's one hour, right? One hour, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like 40 minutes, it's one hour proper. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. One hour. But sir, uh, submit button is enabled half an hour after. Can it so we we get a one and half hour? Ah, so if somebody is having only one uh, one uh, course, then you will get one and a half uh, hours, right? Ah, right? yes, sir. Ah, yes. Okay. So uh, shall we start with this question then? Uh, this is the first question. Uh, the question is: This is a data set given. Uh, this okay, so x is what it's a input, right? Uh, and y is what <laughs> it's a label, right? Label or output. So, uh, plus one is uh, basically the label of that point one zero, uh, plus uh, minus one is also a label of uh, that uh, the, the corresponding points, okay? So, when a function that outputs the sine of x1 minus 3x2 is used as a classification model to fit the data set what is the resultant loss right so i'll try to show you what is uh, this data set is uh, okay, just give me a minute i'll just copy this uh, Uh, I need to copy it. Okay. Uh, so I'm not able to copy it. Okay, uh, fine. So can you just tell me the this data points? Uh, 
for the data set? Okay. Then four five. Four five. Minus one. Uh, five, five four. Minus five, one. Four, yeah, minus one. Six five minus six, one. Five, minus minus one. Six. So we'll see first of all what is this x? X is it's input, input. right? And this is output or I'll say uh, label. Label or output, right? So uh, this is a data set where uh, this kind of so how uh, the input is of which how many dimensions? One dimension. Two, two dimension. Uh, two dimension. Two dimension. Two dimension. Right? Because it has having two uh, values, right? So you, it's a two dimension. So how it will look like? Uh, we'll plot, try to plot it, uh, and I'll show you how you can see this. So actually, uh, I'll write this as okay. I'll write. This point as x1 and this point as x2, right? So axis will be x1, x2, correct? Okay. Uh, now uh, 0, 1, let's say 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6. Here also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Fine. So 1, 0. Uh, uh, this point on this x1 and x2 axis, uh, where it will lie? 1, 0. At x1. So uh, that is x1 is 1 and x2 is 0. So this is the point, right? I'll mark this point by uh, this red dot. Fine. And red is what? I'll say that red is uh, corresponds to plus 1. And let's say blue corresponds to minus 1. So all the red points I'll uh, show by uh, plus 1. Okay. So uh, 2, 2 is where? Here, right? 2, 2 is here. 1, 0 is here. 2, 2 is here. 3, 1. 3, 1 is here. OK? Now 4, 5 uh, is having label as minus 1. So 4, 5 uh, is, uh, OK, so it will lie somewhere here, right? 5, 4. 5, 4 will be here. 6, 5. 6, 5 will be here. So all these blue dots, if you see, uh, these uh, these are what? Uh, the, these are having labels as minus 1. And these red dots are having label as plus 1. So this is how it will look on the coordinate axis. So this is <laughs> two-dimensional data. And uh, uh, this is its label. OK. So now uh, we'll try to understand what is the question. Question says, when a function that outputs the sign of x1 minus 3, x2 is used as a classification model to fit the data set, what is the resultant, uh, resultant loss? So what is this? The, uh, what is What kind of problem is this? It's a classification. Class supervised? OK, supervised or unsupervised? Supervised. 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 Why supervised? Because you have the label. We have data and the label. Right. So we have the data and the corresponding labels. And hence, it is a supervised uh, supervised learning algorithm. Uh, when it will be considered as uh, unsupervised? When we just have the data uh, data points like this, ex uh, only input data points, but we do not have the label regard, uh, uh, label to it. OK, if, if it is supervised, uh, then uh, can you tell me, is it a linear uh, or, uh, or is it a regression problem or a classification problem? This is the classification. This is classification, right? Yes. yes. So how many classes are here? Two classes. Two. These are the two classes. Right? So this is binary classification problem, right? And it's a supervised learning problem. Okay. So this is this is the data set. Yes, we have when we have label, we call it supervised, right? And yes. We, we do not have label. Label we'll call it as unsupervised. Okay. So in this case, it is a supervised learning algorithm uh, or supervised learning problem. Now, uh, this is what we know, right? So for example, we know that when, when the point uh, on the data set is uh, 1, 0, then I know the label corresponding to that point 1, 0 is plus 1. When the data point is 2, 2, I know the label corresponding to it is plus 1, right? So like that. But uh, we have to model it, right? We have to uh, uh, model it means what? We have to 
<coughs> find a function such that uh, if any new point will be given to you suppose i have given a new new data point as uh, suppose 7 comma 2 right so i need to i need to classify this point as uh, whether it is a plus 1 uh, it belongs to plus 1 class or minus 1 class so in that case what i should what i have to do i have to model this data set right and model means i i need to find a function such that it will classify the new data point correct yeah understand yes sir. it is Okay, so I'll, I'll uh, leave this uh, point. So uh, there are uh, different algorithms uh, uh, will be used and that you'll learn in MLT, I guess. So uh, where you can uh, see this classification algorithms and regression algorithms. But uh, let's say we have run this algorithm over this data set and we have found what the function to be what? X1 let's minus say, three, it's Yeah, so, so I'll, I'll write this down function. So F is equals to what? Sine of? X1, x1 minus 3x2. Okay, what is x1, x2? Data points. Data points. So, so uh, data points, or I'll say, uh, uh, let's say 1, 0 is a data point. The, so the coordinates of, coordinates the, of the data point. Right? Of the okay. Data. okay. And what does this uh, 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 this will do? Sign? It will take the sign, so yes. plus, plus or minus. Plus or minus. Right. Plus okay. minus. So, we will we'll try to uh, incorporate that. Uh, uh, for example, let's say, now I'll I'll uh, plug in the value of one zero here. So what I'll get? So one. So I'll, I'll maybe what I'll do is I'll just rub this first. I'll write it down this somewhere else. Okay. So suppose I'll say uh, radius. Radius belongs to plus one. Okay. And this blue belongs to minus one. Now, <coughs> now the yes. Sir, I think it is x1 square minus 3x2. Is it? No, no, it is x1 minus 3x2. X1 right? Oh, okay, sir. Okay. So uh, I, I need to find, let's say, when I have this data point, 1, 0. Okay. So 1, 0, if I plug in, what will be my, uh, why it is what? Why it has, uh, it's a predicted uh, label, right? This is this is a confirmed label, I know, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, minus 1. But why it is what? We we have found this for uh, this uh, model, uh, and from this model, what we are trying to do is we are trying to predict label for this uh, uh, input, right? So suppose if I uh, use this one zero here, what I'll get? Sine of x one is one minus three times zero is what zero. So this is sine of one. So what is the sine of one? Positive. Positive. So this is plus one, I'll say. Right? So uh, the predicted output is plus one. OK? Maybe I'll write on this color, plus two. OK, fine. Uh, Later, uh, for this point two, two, what will, what, what, uh, what will be the output? Sine of two minus six. six. So, so it is sine of? Minus four. Minus four. So what is it? Minus? Minus one. Minus one, right? Because the sign of this minus four is what? This thing minus. So I'll take that one. So that is minus one. So I'll write it down this as minus one. Fine. So can you just tell me for three one what will happen? Three minus zero. Three, zero. So what sign you will give it to you? Uh, give it to that data point. Plus one. It says plus, plus one, but why should we take plus one? It's not negative. It's not negative, right? It's not negative. That's negative. Right. Correct. Yeah, that's it. So this is plus one. What about four, five? Four minus 15. Minus it's one. It. So this is negative. So I'll uh, make this as minus one. Five, four? Five minus 12. Is minus seven is it is also negative. Minus one. So six minus 15. Again, this is negative. negative. <laughs> so these are what? Uh, these are what my these are the predicted labels. So how many times? So I knew previously that for this data points, I knew the labels exactly. And this is what y hat is my predicted label. So how many errors I have done here? One. One. One error, right? Which is what uh, this one. This is the error one I one. have committed, right? 
apart from that uh, whatever the uh, input labels were given to me or uh, uh, given by the data set to me uh, uh, my model is able to predict accurately all those labels only one uh, label i have made the mistake so what is the uh, loss here loss one is one called or one I, by six. This, this is misclassification one error okay error this is what how many uh, uh, times I, uh, my model made the mistake this one, one time one and out of one out of how many six. six so that is my loss right so uh, it is 0. 0.166 right yes 0. 0.166 and that is what the correct answer is understand so suppose uh, uh, instead of this one zero i had uh, the data data set like this x and y uh, it's one zero one and y is let's say plus one here two zero two plus one three zero or maybe three one two as plus one uh, so what what is the input or how many dimensions the input is having three dimensions three, three dimensions right okay so y hat if i uh, if i should have the model it should contain what it can contain two uh, variables, but it should contain how many? Three variables, three. right? Because uh, to denote uh, this three. So this is x1, this is x2, and this is x3. Fine? You have to do the same exact same process. Uh, uh, this is not a difficult task, OK? This is just to understand what is the classification and what is the supervised uh, learning algorithm is there, and what are the, uh, what is the model, what is la loss here? You'll learn in detail how to, uh, you know, how to use this uh, models or how to. Uh, Sir, can you repeat the last one? What did you tell? No, no. See, this is not important. So you just, I'm just saying that if you have the data set like this, x y, let's say one zero one, or two zero one, like that. So how many input uh, or how three. many dimensions input is there? Three, right? So you have to do uh, the same. Uh, calculations uh, and so is it that all um, all data points will be taken uh, we Sorry? can we can uh, calculate the uh, output with uh, two means x1 and x2 only we, we can, can we can it depends on we how your model is trained okay so we will not consider the third one right so i have a small doubt here huh. so in classification problems sir we are always uh, encounter r n to r is that correct sir r n to r like the model input would be r n and the uh, level would be yes r. yes correct correct that is true okay sir. that is true right label is always in classification uh, so label cannot be like two dimension right it should be one dimension definitely and i think in regression also uh, I don't think you'll uh, end up with uh, you know uh, R on it, it end up with only R only right so it's like real yeah. number only True value use. yeah so output is always should be in uh, single value right uh, or yeah correct only sir your question is fine uh, we can solve easily but uh, we do not know in real world scenario how to find this is classification yes. model or this regression model regression model means so regression hai, this classification hai, this supervised or unsupervised how to differentiate between see regression and classification are both supervised okay yes yes Okay. Nee, it's okay, sir, but uh, I want to uh, uh, know about in real world problem, how to find this is classification or this is regression. So it depends on, okay, let's say, I'll, I'll give you an example, okay. So for example, uh, I can make the same problem uh, as a regression problem and I can make the same problem as a uh, classification problem. I'll tell you how. So suppose uh, you you were having let's say uh, you are in a company, fine. Yes, so uh, let's say uh, you have some uh, uh, input like input variables. 
so input variable generally denoted by x suppose those are what uh, suppose uh, uh, it depends so and and there is one output which is let's say profit right yes sir. so i am i'm just i am always be interested in a profit right whatever mm -hmm. if i am running a company my output should be what how much uh, profit my company is making correct mm -hmm. so what are the input factors or what are the factors uh, which are dependent on uh, or what are the factors on which a profit is dependent suppose let's say uh, number of hours the employees are working right okay. correct or maybe or maybe i'll say that uh, number of uh, uh, what do you say number of uh, labor hours something like that right or mm -hmm. what uh, what else is there let's say if it is a uh, some uh, mechanical company or mechanical engineering company uh, will will need a raw material price right yes sir raw material price or there are several factors which affect what my profit correct right? mm -hmm. what is the demand uh, in the market right so all these numbers uh, will be so we, we do not consider uh, all this uh, as you know the, uh, maybe what do you say we will we'll all all, uh, all these things will be considered in terms of numbers suppose this is 2 so 2 is uh, let's say or maybe i'll say 8 8 hours is this is hours okay the first coordinate will define uh, uh, will define let's say hours uh, the second will be let's say uh, raw material price suppose it is uh, 20 for this month okay mm -hmm. the third one is let's say uh, what is the demand so let's say demand is uh, kind of six or something okay in the market so mm -hmm. okay so uh, these three are the uh, input variables and we'll collect it for uh, on a day day by day basis for example yes, yes, one two three or or maybe monthly basis whatever is there okay what is the uh, so what is the final number here i'm interested in profit so okay. suppose in the first month i had a profit of rupees let's say uh, 400 rupees mm -hmm. okay. second month i'll have let's say 200 rupees third month i am having let's say 300 rupees let's say uh, so suppose like this right okay 500 then 100 like this this is the data and how this data comes from from where it is coming so it is coming from uh, the log which are which i am maintaining correct yes sir so what kind of problem is this is this a classification problem or regression problem regression like this is the regression problem right yes sir okay but now uh, let's say i am a manager uh, and uh, what i am saying is instead of uh, writing down these numbers I will say that uh, the company is in profit when it will make uh, uh, make the absolute profit more than two hundred rupees. Okay, otherwise I'll say it's in, it's not in the profit. So when it is more than two hundred, okay, I'll just yeah, say. So we, so we put the uh, some code word. Let's say plus one. Oh plus one is more than two hundred. Okay. Uh, here it is. Let's say plus one. Is plus one. Plus one. This minus one. So now this, I'll say this is the profit. Now I'll say, uh, what kind of problem is this? Classification. Classification. So it always it depends on what how you are collecting the data and how you are representing the data. That is what you have studied in statistics one, right? Mm -hmm. So this all things are dependent on what how you are collecting the data, right? Uh, and uh, what is your end goal is? Yes. Right? you wanted it to be a regression problem or you wanted to so sometimes it is it cannot be a regression problem for example uh, if if there are lots of images and i wanted to find that uh, whether this is a cat or a dog right so that, that you cannot or you can you can actually make the regression problem if you are going to measure some you know uh, pixels or something but okay again that's not worth it right there the the work there is it to make a classification problem right uh, so it is a cat or a dog. Make two labels, and whenever uh, pixel is greater than this, uh, I say than... that this is cat, right? Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Quite understand. Thank you, sir. Okay. Fine. So let's uh, go towards the next problem. Uh, uh, sir, uh, sorry, uh, I have one basic question, if I may ask. Yes, yes, then. Yeah. So uh, see, in this question, like we are talking about uh, R-dimensional. Uh, Sorry, d-dimensional vector, right? So, uh, 
I mean, I, I'm a bit confused at times on the notation that we are using. So, okay. see, we say our d dimensional vector, so we have been writing it as horizontal, right? Like one zero, like that. Uh -huh. So, when we say x transpose, like, uh, I mean, would that be. Uh, uh, okay, so in this, here we are not actually following the uh, norms, but uh, throughout this course, MLF, right? Will okay. represent the vector by uh, this column. Okay, uh, like the, the okay. okay. Uh, and x transpose will be this. So whenever there is no comma here, okay, right. So if here it is not the uh, comma is there, right. So this oh. is the representation of vector. Okay. okay, and this is we are going to follow throughout this course. The only thing here we are considering uh, this as the horizontal vector, horizontal thing as a vector because I am putting a comma here. Okay. I'm representing a point, but it's a vector. I, I can you can understand, right? So this is a vector. Vector generally will start like this, right? This will oh. be like this. Correct? Okay. And I will I will represent this vector by this uh, notation, the vertical uh, column, right? This okay. is the vector representation. If if uh, we'll use a comma, then it is point. No, no, this is also vector, but I'm representing here as a uh, point right so that's why and this is like uh, for representation purpose but generally when we deal in the linear algebra uh, from week three onwards i guess or maybe i think some 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 points in week two we'll always consider the vector so when i say vector right we should always be thinking vector column like this column vector column vector yeah. okay there should not be any confusion when it is a transpose it should be a row vector mm -hmm. that's okay right Okay. So shall we go to question number two? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the question number two is for the data set uh, x i y i. Uh, this is the data set one comma two three comma four four comma three five comma six, and where i goes from one to four. Let the regression function be x square minus two by five. Okay. So you can understand, right? This is the, the first question and the second question. It's the same question, right? Are you able to visualize this? Or same yes. representation at least. Correct. The only thing is here mm -hmm. the output is a, it's a regression output, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, let the regression function be uh, x square minus 2 uh, by 5. Okay. And the mean square error loss obtained while fitting the function of the data set will be what? Okay, so this is x y. The data set is x i y i. So this one comma two, what is x and what is y? One or, is or one comma two is x. No, sir. X is okay. one. Correct. So x i y i. So x is one. Two. Y is two. two. Right. So this is input. So this is uh, one dimensional input, right? And this is output. So you can see, right? Uh, this one comma two represents what x i and y i. So this is input and this is output. Uh, uh, whether but but in in the first case, the uh, input was two, two dimensional. dimensional. Two dimensional. But here okay. it is one dimensional. One dimensional. Also. So can yes? Can you say? Uh, tell me the numbers three four. Uh, four three five six right? Four three five six. Four three and five six. Okay. <laughs> Okay, what is the uh, function which we are using for uh, for predicting the output? X square, is what? X square uh, minus two. X square okay. minus two divided by five. Five. Okay, so for the first uh, point, what is y hat? It is one square minus two divided by five, which minus is one by five. Minus, minus one, one, by one by five. Five. Okay, so minus one by five is minus point one, two. Point five. Point two, right? Okay. Uh, what about this x, x equals to three? Seven nine one minus one. two. Nine minus two is seven. Seven by five. So seven by five is uh, two point. Sorry, one point, right? One point four. This one point four. What about when uh, x is equals to four? It is sixteen uh -huh. minus two divided 14. by five. So fourteen by five, which is 2.8. Uh, when it is 5, then 25 minus 2 is 23 divided by 5, which is uh, 4.6. Right? So these are the predicted values. Okay. 
this is a regression problem so what is the loss uh, in uh, in case of regression problem uh, it is mean squared error variance mean squared error right what is mean squared error is y hat minus y square divided by okay. n right yes correct yes so uh, here what is n 4 n is 4, four. okay and we'll just calculate the loss so 1 by 4 uh, so first is what uh, uh, minus 0. 0. 0.2 minus 2 square you can you can use y minus y hat also right it doesn't uh, affect because it's a square it's it's a square yes. so uh, minus 0. 0.2 minus 2 plus uh, 1.4 minus sorry 4 square plus 2.8 Generally, it is y minus y hat. Okay, this is uh, the standard formula. Okay, plus four point six minus six whole square. Okay, so what is one point eight? Okay, it is two point two, right? Minus two point two. So uh, what is the square of two point two? It is four. Uh, four point four four. Eight four. Okay. Four point eight four. Four point eight four. Eight four. Okay. Four point eight four. Plus, uh, what is this? 4 minus 1.4 is... Uh, 6.76. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. Plus, here, 0. 0.04. 0. 0. 0. Plus, uh, here, 1. is... 1.96. 1.96. Right, right, right. Fine. So, if you can just calculate, tell me the number here. 3.4. 3.4 divided by 4, right? Seriously, no. No, no, no. Average is Sorry. It is it is twelve point uh, okay. So okay, you'll do the calculation. So final answer is three point four you are saying, right? Yeah. So that is the loss. Right? This is the uh, mean square area loss. Fine? Yes, right. Okay, so uh, yeah, okay. in regression problem, uh, we always calculate the loss by uh, mean squared error only. Yes, so here in our uh, syllabus, it is like this. So, generally, you, you did uh, what is it? You approximated. No, oh, it's just uh, okay. I, I don't know. Like, uh, you guys have done, uh, I didn't do the calculation, right? So, okay, 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 sir. Fine. So, you, you do the calculation and write it down, right? I think it is 3.4. Some or maybe some right. Uh sir, in the mock questions, uh, uh the values were not given like up to which decimal place we have to take the loss. So ah, okay. If, in, in, if no no in, in, in anyway in quiz quizzes, uh, it will be written there, right? So for okay, how sir. many decimals you have to write? Yes, yeah, so in the mock it was not given, so that's okay, fine. fine. Okay, uh, so shall we go to the third question? Uh, okay, I don't know this. Okay, this question is there. By density algorithm. Okay, fine. So negative log likelihood loss, uh, we have to find it. Fine. So, okay, I think this mock is including all the questions from week one anyway. So I think we are doing the revision anyway. Fine. So what is the question, uh, the third question? A probability model, probability of x is equals to 1 by 5, if x is between 0 to 5 and uh, uh, it's 0 otherwise, is obtained by the density estimation algorithm for this data points, 2.5, 1, 3, 4.5, like this, uh, and 4.95, compute compute the negative log likelihood uh, loss of the model, right? So... <coughs> So can you just tell me uh, the points? Uh, 2.5. 2.5. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 2.5. I'll write down x1, x2, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. 2.5. 1, 1, 3, 3, 4.5, 4.5, 4.95. 4. Okay, so okay, so can you just and uh, what is what is the uh, probability? The probability is uh, one by five for all between zero to five. Okay. 
Sir, you are not audible. Sir, are you speaking? Okay, sir. sir. Uh, I thought only I could listen. Couldn't no, listen. Sorry. My, my earphone is uh, uh, south. Okay. So wh what I am saying is here what we can do. Okay. What is a negative log likelihood? Negative log likelihood. Sir, uh, just the formula. Yeah. That is one by n into negative log. Uh, like summation of the negative log and the value for xi whatever that probability value is of that. probability of xi yeah so so minus one uh, one by n log uh, log summation uh, i one to n uh, mm. p of xi it has the summation has to be outside log, but inside views of the utility. Okay, you are saying like this? Huh. Mm, yes, sir. Exactly <coughs> like this. Yes, sir. Hmm. Is it? Uh, oh, right. Sir, oh. minus log exi one of minus log taken outside. Is, is, here it is. Minus there, no outside. That is fine. So here, if you want, you can use it. So, okay. So here uh, we have the five data points. So I will go from where to where. One to five. So right? is minus is very Minus is very dangerous. Calculated everything right. Minus I got wrong. <laughs> okay, fine. So uh, here, what you have to do? Uh, so here you, you know right these are the uh, this is a density estimation problem so where you do not have what so actually here you can see the data will look like this x equals to 2.5 1 3 uh, 4.5 and 4.95 that is the only thing which we are given so what is missing here label right label is not there correct and hence it is what it is unsupervised supervised learning uh, algorithm problem right so uh, in this case what generally people do is uh, they will find the probability of that point occurring right okay. so they will try to uh, create clusters or you know uh, find the probabilities of uh, that point and find the likelihood of that uh, to be entered into that cluster so there will be different algorithms you will learn that also but here we have given that uh, this is the probability corresponding to each of the point and we have to find the negative log likelihood okay so what is this probability 1 by 5 when x belongs to what 0 to 5, Zero to five. so can you tell me uh, what what uh, so can i can i directly write, uh, find the lo loss here or uh, i have to do something else you have to find the log no? of 1 by 5. Log of 1 by 5. OK. What else? So is it is it log of the values of x is between 0 to 5. No. You have to sum up. Yes. Uh, so, so there is 5 times yeah. log 1 by yes. 5. Yeah. So one by five. here it is 1 by 5. Yeah. OK. It's here it is 1 by 5. OK. Mm. So and summation in, in that case, I'll write log, minus log of 1 by 5, right? Five times. Uh, five plus, times. Plus, yes. uh, right. So it is like so because sir, I will go from five. Five log. So here yeah. it will be five times this term, yes. right? Yes. Because we are adding five times. Okay. Mm. So now this five five will anyway get cancelled. Minus log of one by five is what? Log of five, right? Yes. Then the minus sign will go. Uh, uh, the yes. decimal. Yes. So you have to find the value of this. That is my loss 
okay so what is the loss log of 5 yeah just you just uh, calculate it and find it out yeah normally so, wise i understood but uh, intuitively i didn't get why we calculate this and what okay so got... yeah i understand because see there are like uh, uh, algorithms are there so i am not sure like whether i can because it will take a lot of time generally what happens is i'll tell you i, I i'll try to give you the you know uh, overview of it you just try to understand it okay so let's say this is uh, let's say we have two dimensional data set i'm, I'm just considering two dimensional instead of one dimensional or if you want one dimensional uh, maybe i'll try to show you that also but i think sometimes seeing it two dimensional it's uh, so considering this problem right this is yes. the problem let's say i have this problem so this is x1 right and what kind of problem is this how, how this problem is related to the real world problems this is not related but yeah there are problems so there are uh, lots of problems for example our dna is right so we do not have any particular order or something like we do not have the labels to that what how does this doctors will identify that okay this is belong to any cluster race they will uh, so there are methods like euclidean distance they will find the centroid and they will see what is there around that like you, you have to decide like you are the person who will be deciding who, or you will be person who will be taking the decision on it and it's not uh, it's not the decision uh, like taken by just like that uh, there is like science behind it okay so some uh, person from that background right should be there for example in uh, while you are deciding uh, this this cluster belongs to which part of dna or something like that right in that case you need a doctor who has a knowledge of uh, different dna yes. yes so like that if you are a, a mechanical engineering student or a electrical engineering student for example in that case what will happen is some expert person should be there uh, from that field uh, who knows uh, about let's say if i if i wanted to find uh, uh, i don't know like like there will be certain problems right for example if you wanted to find that uh, whether uh, this nut bolt right let's say nut bolt if i if i wanted to find the nut bolts of various categories so there should be some expert who will say that okay uh, the length of this uh, uh, nut or uh, the, the length of this bolt should be how much to categorize into some category right so you have to define some categories but you should have some Uh, expert over there and then you can by taking the advice from that expert you can use this uh, mathematical al algorithms to come up with some clusters so for example here you see uh, these points are 1 2.5 right so let's say one I'll, uh, this is uh, okay i'll write down so 1 2 3 suppose 4 5 okay so yes. these points are what this is say 1 this 2.5 3 Uh, i think it is 4.5 and 4.95 yes okay so uh, you can have uh, so for initial uh, initially you should uh, mention that this is this whole thing is my cluster okay this is the first cluster right because you do not have any label you can just go ahead and say that this is my cluster now what you'll do is you'll find the centroid of it centroid let's say i'll i'll say here uh, let's say it's a mean so uh, where this mean will lie you can just tell me where this mean will lie for this so it will lie around 3 or something right yes sir 3 i don't know okay somewhere i, I don't know. okay so let's say the mean is here somewhere okay so this is my first mean now what i'll do is i'll just try to uh, so there are again various methods are there so we'll try to uh, separate these two points let's say if this is the mean i will try to segregate it into two groups so what will be my next cluster what do you think from here suppose my next cluster will be this 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 is cluster 1 because this three points looks like uh, into one cluster right and this is cluster 2 because they are very nearer to each other right so yeah. i made two clusters and the the diff because you see 3 and 4.5 the difference is 1.5 <laughs> so 
so i am just making that uh, this two points away from uh, the mean the from the first cluster mean they are into uh, the cluster 2 and uh, here uh, they are into the cluster 1 what will be the next point so i'll make because this one is i am seeing that this one is uh, far away right so i'll make this as one cluster this has another cluster and this has another cluster okay so what i did here is i made three clusters here one is two and three okay so uh, this cluster let's say starts from point 5 to 1.5 this will start from let's say uh, i don't know 2 to let's say 3.5 okay and here it is starts from let's say 4 to 5 okay so any new point will come uh, suppose some you, you just take some random new point right if it is here i'll it will belong to what cluster 1 so this all these things right how uh, it will go to which cluster it depends on what probabilities right so oh, yes. what, what is the probability that the, the new test point will uh, be this uh, given that it will belongs to that something like that right so this is what uh given right so if it belongs to this interval 0 to 5 the probability associated with that point is 1 by 5 like that you will make so there are different algorithms available i will study that uh, in detail in uh, mlt okay so you just try to understand that it's these are the iterative algorithms this is not like uh, you will just find out directly when you see the data and you will directly find the clusters and it's not it's not like that correct right? Okay. There are iterative algorithms. You have to go through that, uh, and all this will be based on what probability, because we do not have the uh, label, right? We we cannot yes. have the other uh, way to do it. So it's all depends on probability. Understand? Yeah. So the loss will always be in terms of uh, probabilities. Generally, mm -hmm. we, they will prefer the negative loss, like you. And so when we take the loss, like you. is it a probability or what is likelihood so chance chance so, so it's a probability right okay so the range would be 0 to 1 max uh, always right yes but when you, you you have log then it will become flattened right so again it will become a, a flat so uh, so you can just think about it like how uh, this will the log will be always to the base 10 is it no you can use the natural log also but here i think it's used as log uh, based in you just see the calculation uh, it will be mentioned to use log 10 use uh, yeah here this used okay. it should it can be uh, natural log also but it depends okay. sir we we have calculated the likelihood um to, uh, why do we calculate negative log of that okay so so actually it uh, makes the calculation simpler okay so negative uh, sign right generally uh, you can use log likelihood as it is it's not a problem but generally what happens is when you take the negative uh, log likelihood it will make your calculation simple simpler okay and uh, it should Because be you, you understand this in this point probability will always lie where it is between 0 to 1 right Yes. Sir. So log of any uh, this zero point one, it will give negative negative value, right? Uh, log of any decimal points, if you calculate, I think it's right. it becomes negative. Yeah. Yeah. So to make the loss positive, like because we need like we we are actually uh, you know we we are in uh, always see po positive numbers, right? When you see any output or something, it's our practice or it's it's good for us to understand the loss also. In terms of positive value, right? Not the negative value, correct? Yes, so that's negative why this negative point. Right. Uh, yeah. So this negative negative loss that is profit. Correct. Yeah. That right. is like a, not a loss. That is something which right. we do not have that concept in this. Yeah. So so here this negative uh, to cancel out that negative uh, sign because it is always uh, this log of probability, right? It will always give you the negative value. Yes. So uh, to cancel out that negative thing, we are just taking the negative uh, or minus sign, right? Right. Okay. So let's uh, move towards the question number four. The encoder and decoder function expressed as 
is uh, respectively are used to reduce the dimensions of the data set given below so this this is the dimension again is it, what what kind of problem is this is it a supervised or unsupervised problem unsupervised 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 the labels are not there uh, labels are not there definitely it's unsupervised understand yes. Yes. right so this is the input uh, <coughs> given to us there are no labels this is unsupervised no. also in the classification which we did we only add uh, this uh, density uh, redux, sorry, that, uh, some reduction or reduction that some reduction and then density estimation we only add an unsupervised yes so th these are the two problems uh, density estimation and uh, dimensionality reduction right oh, so these two problems sure. are what they are uh, unsupervised. unsupervised unsupervised uh, problems right okay yes yes fine uh, uh, we'll solve this problem uh, this <coughs> <coughs> These kind of problems require a lot of lumbar crunching. What is it? Your lumbar crunching is the only way to do it. Sorry, uh, what? What? Uh, I don't understand. What so is... the we have to do a lot of calculation and make ah, question, yes. Yes. question four. Yes. Yes, sir. We do many times. Then after we got a wrong answer. Yes, sir. So it's like sometimes it's it's like avoiding this question altogether. Okay. Okay. No, I will not ask those kind of questions in the, uh, you know, there. So in examination, it is not. Ah, uh, exam. Yeah, this one will not give you the questions where a lot of calculations are there. Fine. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. So. Just a minute. I'll uh, give you a minute. So can you just tell me the numbers? X is and sir one one minus one. Sorry, minus one one minus one. Minus one one minus one. Minus one. One two one. Hmm. One, one, one minus one one, one one minus one. Okay. Okay, somebody okay, just go hold up. One person can say it. Right. Zero one three. Okay. Zero one three. This is the input given to us. Uh, let's say I'll denote the encoder model as by F and the decoder model as uh, G. Okay. So what is F? F here is x1 minus x2 plus 0.5x3. So F is x1 minus x2 x2 plus 0.5 times x3 okay and what about g g is 0.3 u minus u u minus sorry 0.3 u minus u and u, u. Okay, so f is what uh, minus one minus one minus two uh, minus two point five, right? Yes. Yeah, minus two point. Okay, and uh, is it a uh, so f is encoder model, right? So it's how many dimensions here? Three. One dimension. Sorry. Yeah. Right, because Three, two, one. this function will give me only a scalar yeah. value, correct? One value. Yes, one yes. dimension. Right. So this is so that means I have come from uh, R3. R3 to R R1. Right? R1 or R, right? 
Yes. So yes. that is what encoder model do. What they what it will do? It will reduce the dimensions. So initially I was in three dimensions. It was reduced to one dimension, right? Yes. And then uh, once you reduce it, then you can again decode it to the original dimensions, right? That will uh, that we'll see later. So one to one is uh, so it will give one minus two is minus one uh, plus point five. So which is minus point five. Okay. One minus one is zero minus point five. Okay. Just uh, check my calculations also, right? One plus one, two, two plus one is three. Three. Zero minus one zero point five. Okay. What is G now? So you can see that uh, encoder model, what they do is it has reduced dimensions. What the decoder model will do is, again, it will come back to the original dimensions. R3. So, so this is given by 0.3 times u, comma. So it's a vector, right? Again, it's a vector in three dimensions. It's 0.3 times this value. Yes, sir. So 0.3 times 2.5 is? Uh, minus point seven five. So minus point seven five. Two point five. Two minus two point five. Okay. So this is three dimensions, right? Here, uh, uh, so it is one point one five, point one five, which is negative point one five. Yes, sir. Zero point five. Zero point five minus and negative zero point five. In here it is point same same values for this point one. Five minus point five, right? So three, uh, it's zero point, point nine, nine minus three three plus three. Here zero point one five zero minus point five. zero point five and then zero point five. Right. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, encoder decoder. What is the loss obtained? So what is the loss here? So these are the final values, right? Hmm. So. Okay, this is what we have uh, obtained after uh, dimensionality reduction. These are the, okay. These are original data points, right? Original data points. What are this? This is uh, new data points. I'll say, right? New data points uh, after the dimensionality reduction. Now, what is the loss here? The loss here is <laughs> the Fresh new data point minus the original data point, right? And that should be in square uh, root. Uh, we have to take a square root of it, right? So that uh, the value should become. Uh, so okay. So uh, what do you say? The, the variation should not be there. So here you can see that. So what is the loss here? One by five. Uh, so first point minus point seven five. Corresponding plus one square, plus two point five minus one square plus. Minus two point five plus one square. So this is this is what we obtained for first data point, right? Similarly, you have to do for the second, which is uh, minus point one five minus one square plus uh, plus point five minus two square plus minus point five minus one square. Plus third, fourth, fifth. So you just do the calculations. I'm not going to do that. Uh, but don't worry about it. In quizzes, we'll not ask uh, the calculations, which are very you know uh, difficult to do. Right? But you understand the uh, concept, right? How you are using the encoder model and how you are using the decoder model, and how the loss will be calculated. Loss will be calculated only between the new data points and the original data. Original, right? So this will be considered. Uh, this will come uh, under a PCA. We'll see in week seven. Uh, week seven, we'll have the PCA uh, where we reduce that, and we'll see the exact calculations how to do that. Right. So this same thing will come under PCA. Not same thing. Uh, you will get the algorithm. Okay. Uh, say similar. I'll say. Okay. Uh, because Sir? PCA is for uh, dimensional reduction. Yes. Mm. Sir, how many questions will be there in quizzes? Uh, so yeah. you can expect like around uh, maybe I think 12 to 13 questions, 12 to 15 in that range. Okay, okay sir. And uh, what is the weightage weekly? 
we quite select um, that i am not sure about because uh, i forgot maybe but yeah but you can say that uh, it's like around 25 to 25% each of the week <laughs> so it's not like uh, it will it may differ like 20% 30% like that but uh, you can say that uh, like all the uh, weeks will have the equal weightage almost equal weight because sir uh, in the mock there are 17 questions and that's no, this is why because I'm... no this is no mock will not be the exactly as the quiz <laughs> okay here a lot of questions are there you can see that this four questions are coming from the week one and which are actually covering what entire week one i'll say right all the concepts supervise and supervise and how to calculate loss everything is there right you can have the same thing because uh, you will not have, definitely will not have 17 questions in the quiz okay sir okay so, okay so let's go for uh, question number 5 uh, let g of x is 2.5 uh, so this is the uh, function given determine the equation of the tangent line and using uh, at x equals to 0.5 and using it estimate the value of g of 1.5 Okay, uh, this is the function we want to determine the question of tangent line at x equals 0.5. I don't know what is the. Okay, let's see. The, the question is not properly uh, framed, I'll say. Okay, no issues. Uh, we'll try to solve that also. Uh, the tangent means linear approximation. Ask now the differentiation and then we put the slope into the point yes so uh, you have to differentiate that and we have to uh, find the slope of it fine but uh, maybe okay I'll, I'll just keep this question as it is here uh, we'll try to solve that question later on first we will solve the question of uh, question number six seven because i have, <coughs> i will solve it anyway but just uh, i don't want to use it uh, like do it now itself I just see all the questions A, B. Okay. Sir, I have a problem in question 13. We do not know uh, what is the formula we put on. Okay, 13 is second order, order observation. Order. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. Sir, so, Professor Todd, first I could not clear. Uh, how so shall I solve that problem first, then? Question number 13? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we can go one by one, sir. Okay, we'll go one by one. I, but I think this 13 question is uh, related to week two. So I, I'll, I'll finish it off. No? Asian matrix is yeah, there, yeah. not related to week two, or is it? It is related to week two. Okay. Uh, okay. This higher order approximation, actually. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Professor taught in lecture there is when we go to the second order, we use the Haitian matrix. Uh, Yes, you can use the Hessian matrix or uh, there is another way I'll do. Maybe I'll do that way. Fine. Okay, so I'll, I'll uh, solve this question first and then we'll go to the question six. Sir, is it possible we'll ask this second order approximation also? Yes, yes. If, if, if there is a possibility. Okay. Because it's there, right? I'll solve it. Fine. But, sir, uh, in the lecture video, Professor just showed one example and moved forward, right? It's okay, no? One example is there. It's enough, right? No, but uh, he just came up with the formula, wrote it, solved it, and completed it. Ah, it's okay, right? That's what I'm saying. It's fine. But so, he also told that um, in this course, higher order uh, approximations are there. not be used. Yeah, but uh, I yes, <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. Don't worry about it. Uh, so the point is one one, right? Okay. So uh, this is what uh, you, this is actually multivariate, right? It's, it's, yes. Because there are two variables x and y okay or i can say it's uh, two dimension right it's not the single dimensions we have two dimensions x and y uh, so what is the formula for it uh, i'll write it down so the approximation formula is what so suppose f of x y uh, is approximated as f of v v is this point okay f of v plus del f del f of v transpose write the transpose here uh, into x minus v what is the normally like for single uh, uh, for uh, what is it single dimension problem 
the approximation is like this f of x so f of x is equal to what f of x star right plus f dash of f dash of x star x minus x star. x minus, x minus, x minus x star. Star. so are you able to see this uh, the similarity here x star is what this point b right yes sir. right uh, f dash of uh, x star is replaced by why uh, what gradient gradient. gradient gradient right gradient is it's not i'll say it's not that difficult otherwise you can see it's a, it's the same thing you just don't have to remember the two different formulas right it's the same thing only you have to care, be careful uh, with this here it's f dash and when it goes for the multivariate or the higher dimensions what will happen it will become a gradient right and uh, gradient at which point at point b is it okay yes That's fine, right? repeat? see this is this is a similar similar formula right f of x now about gradient details yeah so instead of uh, the first derivative f dash of x star you just have to use the gradient in when you go for higher dimensions understand because gradient is what so gradient uh, for x y is what the partial derivative with respect to x and partial derivative with respect to y it is for two dimension for three dimension what is it f by del y del f by del z right in single dimension what is it it is actually del f by del x but since yeah. it's single dimension we are using df by dx right because there are no uh, two dimensions or two variables here where i can use the partial derivative partial derivative will comes into the picture when when you have uh, a problem of multivariate like two or more than that right understand yes. so df of d, d by df of d by dx of f is nothing but f dash of x right yes okay so in higher order uh, uh, problems this f dash of x star will replace by gradient right yes okay so yeah so let's let's try to solve it okay but this is just a linear right linear only correct but the question is higher order higher yeah. order is fine right higher order means what dimensions to, dimension that is multivariate right higher multivariate order, you have to add one more term right the half quadratic term no 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 f double dash we have to add yes sir higher order means a new term will come which is of the type quadratic hmm. that's why you have the x square that's why we got second order approximation is that yeah. is yeah. Yeah. we have to do plus 1 by 2 f double dash of v that's why the asian matrix will come. Yeah. yes sir. and how yes. to remember okay, that so, formula so Okay, this for this this problem is coming from uh, uh, so have you solved this problem and with that method, ah, huh? f double dash. So yes, yes, yes. But uh, I couldn't match the answer. Because yes, sir. Okay. That's oh, right. Okay. Then, then, then okay, we'll we'll not ask those questions then definitely because we'll go sir, on this multivariate problem. Sir, uh, I think there is another way uh, without doing Hessian matrix. If we can do it like that, x minus uh, the value of the x component plus uh, y minus value of the y component at take its whole square and taking the dot product with the uh, grad of f double dash. Ah, correct, but uh, that is the same thing, na? Same thing, only right? Okay, same thing only. But, but, but sir, that I think answer was not matching. I mean, I tried the same. Okay, but answer should match. But what I'll say is, don't worry about it. Then see if it is not uh, either because we are not going to ask. I I thought it's a problem of this, the multivariate. Uh, so if it is not there, then do not worry about it. I think we shouldn't waste the time then there, right? Because anyway, it's not coming into the quiz. Uh, if you want this problem's answer, I'll solve it later uh, and I'll show it to you. Sir, in lecture two point six. There is a five-minute section regarding this. I know it's okay. It's okay. I thought uh, uh, this is the problem where you should use the multivariate thing. Because see, yes. if you if you if you solve it now, then it is like it's not, it's not of any use, right? It's not. It's a waste of your time, actually, currently. Because if it is not coming in the quiz, which is after two days, 
I will feel like uh, we'll we'll uh, solve it later. Maybe after quiz we'll solve it. Right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, then I'll sir, I'll leave it uh, here. Yeah. Sir, can you just uh, tell us the formula? Uh, I I I agree that we should not go ahead with uh, solving because it is time consuming. Huh. But can you just give us the formula because uh, I got really confused uh, while solving it today. We have that uh, just one extra term, one by two into x yeah, minus v transpose. One by two x minus v transpose. <laughs> gradient. Okay, uh, just okay. Tell. No, but for two variables, how to take that uh, partial differentiation with respect yeah. to? That is where the Hessian matrix comes. It's about gradient. Okay, what, okay, what is Hessian matrix? Okay. Is this is the Hessian matrix, right? F x x. Yes, sir. Ye. Just tell this because this is the only part I was forget. Like we most of delta x delta y then okay. del square f del x. x. This is yeah. always a symmetric matrix. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sir. Okay. So this term and this term is same. Same. Yeah. Yes. Right. And here it is del two f upon del, del y square. square. Okay. This is Hessian matrix. Okay. For two dimensions. For three dimension, it will become what? Del two f upon uh, del x square. Then here del two f, del x, del y, del two f, del x, del z. Here now it is symmetric, right? So it is del two f upon del y square. Del x, del 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 y. See these terms, right? It will always come on the diagonal side. Yeah. Okay? So here you mm -hmm. see, uh, this is del two f upon Del y square here, del two. You can understand. This is x. This is y. This is z. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yes, sir. So uh, uh, here it will be del y. Sir, I am not getting it. What is what you are not getting it? How uh, how we are calculating the del square, sir? Okay. So let's say. Okay. These are partial derivatives, right? Which is okay. I'll write it. Uh, we did in mass too. These are second order partial derivatives. Right? Double yeah. differentiation. Yes. Huh. Yes. yes. Or I can say del y del x, but both values should come same. Yeah. F upon del y square, right? And this is two dimension, three dimensions. It will be del two f upon del x square, del two f upon del x, del y, to f upon del x. Del z, right? Here it is. Del two f upon del y del x, del two f upon del y square, del two f upon uh, del y del del two f upon del z del x, del two f upon del z del y, del two f upon del z square. This is the matrix for three dimensions. So I'll try to solve you. Uh, so let's say f is equals to x square y, which is our problem, right? So here's a matrix corresponding to that function. This function is like this. Del two f upon del x square means what is del f upon del x? Two x two x y, because y is treated as constant, and we are differentiating with respect to x. So x square uh, will be two x, two x times y. Yes. Then del two f upon del x square. That means I am again differentiating uh -huh. this one. So, okay, I'll write you uh, write it down it in the proper way, maybe. Uh -huh. So let's say del two f upon del x square is what del by del x of del f upon del x, right? So del by del x of what is this? Two x y, two x y, right? Yes. So, so. Uh, we we are just differentiating this, so this will give me two y. This y. value comes here two y. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, del two f upon del x del y is what? Del by del y of del f upon del x, right? Correct. So yes, yeah. so what is this? Del so upon del y of the y taken outside like two x y when you write. Yes, it's okay. You. See this. This doesn't matter, right? With respect to like, if I write like this or uh, uh, the order doesn't matter actually here. So, so basically, we are first doing by uh, x, then by y. 
because I have done here del f upon del x, then I'm just uh, doing it for y. So now, what is the value? 2x. 2x. Right. So 2x will come here. Again, 2x will come here. Because yeah. in both way, if you try to solve it, because if okay, I'll try to solve it in both no. ways also. So suppose I it wanted to no. solve it like this. Uh, I'll remove this. So I'm just going a little bit faster, but you just bear with me, okay? Uh, so suppose here it is. What is del f upon del y for this function? X square, correct? Del right? Yeah. Yes. Then del f of del two f upon del y square is what? I am oh, just yeah. differentiating del f upon del y with respect to y. Which mm. is del by del y of x square, but here there is no term of y, so this is constant, right? X square is constant. So what mm. is it? Zero. Zero. So this will be zero. Del f, del two f upon del y square is zero. But what about del f upon del x del y? So del by del x of del f by del y, which is what? Del by del x of two x square, right? Yes. Sir. Which is what? Two x. So you see, two x. If I do it like this way, it is coming two x. If I do this way, also two x. Yes. That's why these two values mm -hmm. are. So it is called so symmetric matrix. Uh, because you see, uh, symmetric matrix is that matrix whose uh, uh, the, the the values opposite to the diagonal, right? They are same, right? Mm -hmm. So you see here this. So all these values, right? Okay, this is my diagonal. Uh, this value, this value is mm -hmm. same. This value, this value is same. This value, this value is same. Here, mm -hmm. uh, if this is diagonal, this value, this value. So mirror images are same. Right? Mm -hmm. Understand? This is Hessian matrix. And Hessian matrix is always a symmetric matrix. Done? Yeah. But once we get all these uh, values, then uh, we'll just have to. Okay, but uh, that that is what that calculation uh -huh. is of uh, linear algebra. Like you uh -huh. just need to uh, have something about linear algebra, right? Yeah. You just like you you have to able to do the matrix multiplications. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay, but I I'm not I'm not going into that details for solving this problem because yeah. Then uh, you you guys can try it, but I'll suggest you try it after the quiz. Because it's not there in the okay. current. Yeah. Then? Thank you, sir. Okay. So let's try to solve this question number six. Uh, then I, I'll come to the question number five. Day. Uh, currently, so, uh, try to solve question number six. The directional derivative of this function x y at one one in the direction of unit vector along uh, this direction. Okay. Okay. So let's. What is the function? Function given to us is what? Y square plus three x square. X y cube. I'm talking about question number. Uh, okay, x y square, right? X y square plus three x square. Three x square. And uh, I need to find the directional derivative at point one one mm -hmm. along which direction? Minus along this direction. Minus w. one. Minus one. One. Minus one, one. Okay. Uh, okay. Which question is this? Seven. Question number okay. seven. Okay. So, okay. what is the what is the directional derivative? So it is given by del f at point what? Del f at point one one into uh, it's a dot product with the unit vector right? right. in the direction. Okay. So uh, I'll write this unit vector as u hat. Okay, is this fine? This is my yes sir. directional derivative. I'll write. I'm writing this directional derivative as dd. It is usually what is it? You know, suppose uh, this is the curve. Oh, okay, this is the curve. Uh, at this point, what is the gradient? Gradient will be tangent. Tangent. At that point. 
this is the point gradient will be what and i i need to find that into some direction right actually gradient will be uh, uh, okay so if, if if this is tangent here then uh, i have to find this value in some direction right because this is a point i have to find it where it is going so let's say in this in this direction or this direction right so i will just have to find out that so uh, no, this is direction of unit vector unit vector okay why because why we do it for unit vector is because unit vector is the very fundamental uh, quantity right because any multiplication of that vector uh, will give me the same direction right that is what we learn in uh, linear algebra so right we'll just try to find the basis why we go for that basis is because this is the fundamental uh, direction right or the, the most basic direction okay so uh, we'll solve this problem uh, this is the directional derivative uh, just try to solve the gradient first so what is del f here del f upon del x because it's two dimensional so gradient is this right what is del f by del x uh, y square plus differentiating plus. differentiating this function with respect to x by treating y as constant right so first term will be y square y square because it's constant and second will be 6x correct what is what about del f upon del y now we treat x as constant and differentiate with respect to y so this will give me 2xy correct and this term is zero right because there is no y there this constant okay and if i wanted to find del f at that point 1 1 what will i do i just plug in the values of x and y here so y is 1 so 1 square plus 6 is 7 right so 1 square plus 6 into 1 and here 2 into 1 into 1 so this gradient uh at point 1 1 is 7 correct yes sir sir gradient is uh, a plane isn't it gradient is a plane uh, i will not say it's a plane uh, in case of uh, two dimensions hmm. it is a plane only it's a vector right so vector is uh, it cannot be a plane yes case of two dimensions also no it's it's it, it should not be the plane okay into with two dimensions it will be uh it because do, it's a direction right so gradient is it it will be a line it will be a line there in two dimensions so how we are denoting a line with this uh, vector means you just okay Okay. So how we are going to denote this? Huh? Okay. What is seven two? Uh, how will you represent this gradient in two dimensions? Uh, we vector is also a point. Uh, a point with uh, zero zero sir with origin means we can we draw a line towards okay. seven two. So so seven is somewhere somewhere like this, right? Yes. So this will be a line or a plane? Uh, this will be a line, sir. so this is this is what uh, the direction will be there right in when i'm not, i'm just talking about uh, a two dimensional case this is a two dimensional case right so it cannot be a plane correct mm. yes but uh, sir gradient is uh, the um, the tangent ha huh. in case of uh, the tangent can be a line line right? and in case of uh, uh, a curve means a uh, three dimension Uh, uh, it is it is a plane sir told about this three dimensions no three dimensions correct only right three dimensions it will be uh, a, a plane right uh, after that you will have if you go for more dimensions you will get uh, 
Also in three dimension, if it is a plane, it is also denoted by a vector only. We will have seven, two, and some more. Ah, uh, but two vectors. So how it will span? The plane. How it will span? Can you just tell me, like, uh, okay, I don't know, like, how to. Say, what What is this? What is the equation of this line? Or what? How will you denote this? X comma zero, right? Maybe I'll I'll say that. This is. This let's say I have two two vectors, right? Let's say. I don't know whether this is important conversation or not, but let's say you have this one vector here and another vector here. Okay? Yes. This these two vectors are there. These two vectors will span some space, right? Yes. Then this will represent these two vectors will represent a plane, right? But when you have a single vector, how can you say that uh, it will? <coughs> so that is what um, I was asking. Uh, we denote the gradient by single vector only, na? No? We we always denote the, in case of three dimension also, no. we denote the uh, uh, gradient as single vector. Mm. Okay. But uh, you sure that like it will represent a plane there also? Okay. I'll have to think about it. Just give me a minute. Okay. So. But uh, it's definitely a line when it will represent, you know, uh, when it is two dimension, it should be definitely a line uh, mm -hmm. because it's a tangent to that curve. So it, it should be a line there. And when it comes to uh, a three, three dimension case, the three dimensions need Sir, to be there. Tangent plane. Huh? Tangent plane. Sir has mentioned about this. For for two dimension cases, you are saying. Uh, in three dimensions, sir. Uh, three dimension, it should be a tangent plane. Uh, that I'm I'm also sure about it. But the thing is, how so, sir, uh, my question was: if it is tangent plane, is it the same as gradient? Yeah, it's a grad. It's same as gradient is what actually. So, so then, how we are uh, comparing both? A gradient is a single vector. Where we are taking gradient in uh, two dimension, no? and there we will take gradient in three dimension. Ah, then only. Then also, it is a single line in three dimension. Also, a vector is what. So when you write the equation, you will get a equation of plane. Which equation? After calculating gradient, when you write the equation using it, you will get a plane. We always write the gradient as a vector, vector of three dimensions, seven, two, and or one, two, three. So these vectors are uh, a single line only. Okay, okay, wait, 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 don't worry, wait. just a minute. Oh, I actually, the gradient will have two vectors. For more than two dimension, you will have gradient will have two more vectors. Am I correct?
Okay, I'll, I'll sir. Uh, yeah, uh, I think it's, I'll uh, I'll give you sir, the after picture. taking gradient. Huh. Oh, we will do linear approximation. Then we get a plane on the graph, sir. At that point, <laughs> and that will be the tangent plane to the graph. To the graph. Okay. The gradient is always a vector, right? Gradient is a vector, and Sir, it is it the of, the, as the, the direction of the of steepest accent. Gradient, uh, uh, what is the difference between gradient and uh, the direction of steepest accent? Uh, the direction of steepest, uh, steepest accent or descent, both is same. Like this is same as a gradient, okay? But the thing is. Uh, no, descent is also same as gradient. No, no not same means like gradient, gradient of the gradient. Right. So if it is steep, uh, steep as, uh, accent, right? So it's negative of that means it's like opposite to that, opposite to the gradient. Okay. So both are the same, but I think the the point which he is making, right? So uh, when we get the gradient, it's a vector, and when you uh, get an equation of it, right? Equation of the tangent, it will give me whether it is a line or it's a plane, right? So we'll, we'll okay. Maybe we'll solve this one, and then uh, you can understand this. Okay, I think yes. that's the correct explanation there. So this is like del f at one one is what seven comma two. Uh, what is you had here? <coughs> Minus one by root two, one by root two. Uh, so it is what it is actually uh, uh, here in this case. I'll say this w hat and w hat will be uh, w bar upon norm of it, right? So here I'll denote as uh, so this is like minus one divided by root of one square plus one square, or I'll say minus one square plus one square. And one divided by root of and so square. So, 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 so what we can do is uh, we should, uh, minus one upon root two, right? Here one upon root two. This, right? this is to the, new uh, the unit vector along this direction, so right? So if you find the directional derivative in this direction, uh, it will be what? Create the bound point for them. Uh, just like the vector, right? Seven two. The transpose of this vector is what? And then copy the uh, seven, data what is between uh, the disks on the same VM with the copy function. Someone is talking in the background. And, and then <laughs> yeah. so uh, dot product of this is what? Uh, this is nothing but so del f. At one one dot w hat is same as the left transpose on one uh, w hat. So, what is the transpose of this? Seven two w hat is minus one by root two. Yes, minus one by Okay. So if I do the calculation here, uh, this is uh, one cross two matrix. So two two cross sorry vector. So I'll get so, a value. Uh, so did we also take W hat transpose? No no no, not not both transpose only. Uh, so U dot U uh, or maybe okay this U bar dot V bar is what? U transpose into V. Okay, got it. Okay. These both are the same thing. Fine. So you will get a single value. So 7 into minus 1 by root 2 is minus 7 by root 2 plus 2 by root 2, which is nothing but 5 by root 2. Okay, this is what? The direction. Sir, minus 5 by root 2. Uh, minus 5 by root 2. This is directional derivative. So this is a value. Uh, 
okay and i now uh, will see the question number uh, which one is this question number 5 five. five right so in that question number 5 what i have to do now i need the function is given to me i need to find the equation of the tangent line at this point uh, and then okay then we will have to find the uh, value of g point 1.5 j of 1.5 but first of all we'll find the equation of the tangent so how to find it okay uh, g of x is what 2.5 hmm c to the power minus x square to the power minus x square plus 0.2 x plus 2 hmm Okay. this is the function given to me i need to find the equation of uh, tangent line so how to find it linear approximation you should use the linear approximation linear approximation at uh, so if because i i need to find this at x equals to 0.5 <coughs> i have to use what is x star here 0.5 x star is 0.5 okay so using the linear approximation uh, what is g of x is g of 0.5 g of uh, 0.5 plus uh, plus g dash of 0.5 g dash of 0.5 into x, x minus 0.5 okay so what is first of all i'll find g dash of x what is it 2.5 2.5 e to the power something is again e to the power same uh, minus same. x square minus x square plus 0.2x plus 2 into plus 2 into minus 2 minus 2x plus 0.2 right that is uh, and now what is g dash of g dash of 0.5 so i just have to plug in all these values here so it is 2.5 into e to the power uh, minus so can you just tell me the value here to calculate so for me it was coming 20.97 i don't know if that's correct i only expanded at the last hmm Sir, one point eight five. Positive one point eight five. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, point five square is point two five plus point. Okay, this one three. So three minus point two five. Three minus point two five is e raised to the power one point eight five. That is fine. But the, are you asking the final value or no? E raised to this is one point eight five only. Okay. What the other one as well? Uh, and here, change, right? here minus two into point five is. Uh, so this is going to be like minus one plus zero point two. So. Ah, uh, minus one into zero. So it's point eight, right? Yes. Um, so, yeah. so what is the final value here? But minus. Ma minus twelve point seven one nine six. This minus. Uh, minus. Twelve point seven one nine six. Okay, this is okay, but uh, don't worry about it. This type of calculations will not be there. Uh, this is slightly difficult. Uh, it's not. But we could have like just solved the equation and then uh, oh. kind of put the value in the last. Right. So. Yes, sir. So fine. Anyway, this is like so e it to the power. The value of e to the power one point eight five at the last. Ah, fine. Yes, sir. That is that, uh, fifteen point eight nine. Yes, because yes. half of the stuff cancels out. Yes. Ah, okay, fine. Okay, so it's it's up to you. You just uh, solve it like however you want. G of x is, uh, it's like fifteen point eight nine nine, right? Yeah. Uh, minus twelve point seven. Minus twelve point seven nine six into x minus zero point five. Point five. And now uh, I think they asked us to find g of 1.5. So uh, instead of this x, I have to put 
So okay, I'll just write down fifteen point eight nine nine. That will be one one. Seven one nine six. Here, uh, it's one point five minus minus twelve point seven one six. So we subtract. Actually, we get one point five minus point five is equal to one. We got it. Yeah. So whatever the answer is, this is a procedure. A procedure you have to solve, right? So because uh, a linear approximation means what? Uh, it's actually you are at at that point. Actually, you are finding a tangent to that curve. Correct. So uh, that is what the linear approximation gives you. Okay. So let's. Uh, we are. Uh, we just completed only six questions. Okay. We will uh, solve the seventh one. So Let can we solve the eighth question? Ah, we'll we'll do that after seven. We'll do that. Seven. Okay, I don't know how many questions we are able to finish it, uh, but I think we should uh, do at least question number nine. Okay, by today, and then we'll do the rest later. Okay, so uh, let the function f of x uh, as this x a x minus three, uh, four, and this. Okay, be continuous for all uh, in that range. Find the value of a. Okay, can you just tell me this function? Ax minus three. Ax minus three. When x uh, is less than two. When x is less than two. two. Yeah. It is four when x is equal to two. X equals to two. It is two x when x is greater than two. X when x is greater than two. And this function is continuous. Uh, At point. So like x belonging to R, it is continuous. Right. So I need to find that uh, this value. So what does that mean? A left hand side limit is equals to right hand side, side equals limit. to the value at uh, x at that point, right? So equals to let's F2. say the value at that point. Let's say value at x equals to two. Okay. Yes, so what is the left hand side limit as? So limit as x tends to two. Uh, I'll say plus, right? Plus or minus? Okay, whatever. So let's say so if it plus, then it is two x. X minus three. Oh. Okay, so uh, yeah, it should be minus, right? So because yes. it's less than then it is x equals to equal to this. four equals to yes. As x tends to two plus times two x, right? So I'll just plug in the value here uh, uh, instead of x. So it will give me what a minus sorry two a minus three two. equals to four four. I think yes. this is sufficient. We we don't need this part now, right? Yeah. To find the value of a here, correct? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, or you can use. Uh, I don't know. There is no. Like, we have to use yes. this only. Or you can use. We no, are no, getting x equal to two from this part only, no? So here also you can get the four value only. If you just, uh, if you don't take consider this also, doesn't matter anyway because this part also will give me four, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Two a minus three, so two a equals to seven, and a equals to three point five, which is seven by two. Fine. Okay, I think that was the simpler uh, question. Uh, let's move to this one. Uh, F is what r to two r, given by this uh, following the algorithm. Okay, this is uh, a gradient descent algorithm, right? <coughs> yes. But I don't. Okay, you guys have not seen this. Uh, it is uh, step size and this is evaluated at x n x h equals to 0.25 and x not at the initial point converges to something. Okay. okay so uh, we haven't seen. Uh, uh, I think this like this way how 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 it will. So converging means what generally? Sir, so if it is like. Uh... Like like you are reaching a limit, right? So in that yeah. So after so many iterations, you are okay, right? Uh, okay. So what does it mean? Reaching to some limit is after approaching the, something. Uh, approaching yeah, limit. you are approaching to the similar value, right? So suppose this series is there. Let's say, uh, which series will converge? Okay, one by x, sir. Uh, one by x. No, one by x. And x tends to what? Infinity, right? So like yes, this sir. will like one upon one, then one by two, 
one by three, one by four, one by five, one by six. So where it is actually converging? Zero. It is converging towards zero. But uh, it's like, uh, <laughs> is there any other uh, sequence you know which uh, we can see like easily? So what uh, what is happening here actually? Yeah. After some point of time, right? After some point of time, uh, there is no change of value, right? Hmm. Right. So uh, it's very. Uh, they are very close to each other. All the values are very close to each other. For example, so uh, according to Gauss theorem, yeah. So like this, right? So if we we are here, suppose here, if you are jumping from here to here, there is a large gap, right? But after some iterations, right? When you reach to the minimum point or something, you will be very uh, near to that. Okay, uh, near to that point. So that is called converging. But maybe I'll have some other. Okay, I actually I had uh, two series, two sequences where I can show you that. Uh, we just give a moment. I'm just I'll search that. Okay, because I think that is very visible. Uh... So this uh, the the thing given in the question you are saying is that's a gradient descent algorithm. Ah, this is actually a gradient descent algorithm. Uh, but okay, so. Okay, I like. Okay, this is this is the uh, see this is the sequence I'll show, uh, which is actually converging to some value. Okay, let's say t and t goes from uh, you know <coughs> one to so you start from one to like two. Okay, for example, okay. So you can see that first is one by two, right? Uh, what is the second value? One by four. Then one by eight by sixteen. So this. Uh, so if I take a sum of this series, where it is converging? <coughs> some, Zero. some 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 some. 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 It's converging to two, two, two. Uh, yes, because sir. okay, it will start from uh, here, right? One by one. Huh. Uh, two. Okay, I'll start from zero. So uh, zero one two, right? Uh, so it, this sum is actually converging to two. What does that mean? So you see that one plus all these values, right? So if you if you just sum of all all those values, actually they, they are uh, you know uh, this limit is going towards one, right? So that means this value. Uh, is one there, or, or the sum of all these values is going to be one, right? Or you can say, in other words, uh, how this series is converging. If I say one by two, uh, if I go to the infinity, what will happen? This will converge to zero. 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 Right? So that is uh, another. Uh, so this is the limit, right? So that is what uh, converging will do. But here, okay, you don't need to worry about this gradient descent algorithm right now. But we have sir, to find one the t values of t. There Sorry? is a value. So one okay, of t power t is depend on value of t. Value of t. T is actually uh, is called the iteration. So I, every iteration. Okay, don't worry about it. So the gradient descent algorithm when it will come, right? I will just explain it uh, there. And uh, until that point of time, we will understand it better. Okay. okay. So currently, uh, this is the algorithm given to me. What is it? X n plus one is equals to x n minus 0.25 times, which is h, right? It is a step size, and it is constant here. 0.25 times. Uh, what is it? Del f of x n. Okay. Uh, what is this? It's a vector, right? This vector. Yes. This is also a vector. And this is also the vector, right? Yeah. Okay. So all three are vectors, uh, and uh, this is actually a, a two-dimensional vector, right? Yeah. Okay. Which among the following points uh, does the algorithm converge to? Okay. So how this will work? I'll show it first. Uh, our initialization is what? This one. 
x naught right 1 3 so if my f is x square plus y square which is in this case x square plus y square what is my gradient look will look like 2x 2y right right is it correct yes and what is x naught the initialization is 1 3 so we have started with 1 3 and with this gradient uh, how <laughs> how it will happen like uh, iteration after iteration how the value will change iteration after iteration that we have to calculate or see so so if it is x0 okay uh, and I'm, I'm saying that this is a vector this will look like this one three and uh, this, this gradient i have to find at uh, this point so del f at x naught is what two six right is it correct yes you said it is decreasing it is decreasing right yes sir okay okay so uh, we'll have to see uh, okay so let's say xn plus 1 xn plus 1 is what is xn x naught right so i'll say n is equals to 0 so x1 is equals to, okay here it will x1 is equals to x naught minus 0.25 times uh, the left of the left at x naught okay so x naught is what 1 3 minus 0.25 times this gradient which is 2 6 right uh, so here you see it's one three one minus uh how much it is point five five you should one point five one point five so x one will be point five and one point five this is x one okay uh what about x two the next iteration Point zero two five point two five. So point for seven. for x two, uh, what uh, how the equation will look like? X one minus del point f or h h times del f at x one, right? So del f at x one is what? Del f is two x two y. So now the the value will go for x as point five and for y as one point five there, right? So del one f x1 one is 1 and 3 3 understand okay so x1 is what 0.5 here it is 1.5 minus 0.25 times 1 3 so what is the value then 0.5 minus 0 0.25 is 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.75 5 and uh, it is 0.75 so you can just understand that we were at the starting we were uh, actually at uh, at x13 now uh, after the first iteration we reach to this point which is 0.5 uh, 1.5 that means uh, we have descended right so from 13 to 0.15 one, uh, 1.5 then we just descended to 0 0.25 0 0.75 so, so if you find del x f x one one three. So what was del f? Del f is two x two y. Yes. So uh, so initially what we did to find del f at x naught, we put the value of x naught one three. X naught as one three uh, and del f, right? So yes. To find a, a del f at x one, what do I have to do? Put the value of x one, right? Now what is x one? 0.5 1.5 right yes sir. so i just put 1.5 here so 2 into 0.5 is how much okay sir one, one and yes. 2 into 1.5 is three that's how i found 
del f at x1 so okay. how to find del f at x2 then now we put the value of uh, x2 x2 as 0.25 so 2 two times 0.25 is 0.5 and 0.75 uh, into 2 is 1.5 so what will be the next iteration x3 will be what 0.25 sir x2 Okay. Minus if you can, if you understand this, then I'll just write down directly. Yes. <laughs> See, sir, that we goes up to. No, no, that that it will go like. So this is like iterative process, right? It will go. That's what we have to find where it is going to converge. You just have to observe the train. Uh, that's okay. Just just look at this. Like I'm I'm asking you to. Do some calculation. You do it, and just we'll we'll come to the conclusion. Okay. So, what is point two five times point five? Zero point one two five. Zero point one two five. What about this? Zero point three seven five. Correct, na? Sure. Okay. And then what is x three now? Zero point one two five. Zero point three seven. So, so sir, decreasing. Decreasing, right? But how it is decreasing? That we have to see. Fifty percent, so, yeah, fifty percent every time. So you just see, uh, initially, uh, let's let's try to you know, uh, x and y. Okay, so when uh, where I was initially, one three, one three. Okay, so okay, uh, just make one little bit here. Is it fine? Yes. Uh, one. If I no, not there. Suppose one three. Hmm? So I was here. What after first iteration where I uh, went? Point five, one point five. So point five, one point five is uh, suppose half of it is point five, and uh, half of it is here somewhere. Then after that, again half of it. Point two five. Point two five, and, and somewhere here, right? So yeah. let's say this is this, uh, and after that now I'm just reaching. Point one two five. Uh, like half of it, so you you can just see the strain, right? The straight line, and wh from where it will pass through. After some point, it will pass through. So every time you will do half, 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 also, right? It will uh, after some point of time, wh where should it will pass? Uh, it will not pass through, right? Actually, it should, it should not pass, right? Okay, fine. It is uh, not uh, exactly. So okay. we got the zero zero. Then we. Cannot go beyond that. Ha! Huh, it's okay. So uh, we can go, right? But <laughs> don't know. Okay. Uh, but it's okay. So I was here. I'm. I'm just doing like. Uh, but what is the closest point? I'll say. So if I go through this point, suppose this is the line, uh, or this is the train I'm seeing currently. Uh, it, it goes to zero zero. Sir. Will it go to zero zero? Yeah. Fifty percent will go to zero zero. Okay, you think about it. Just tell me. Yeah, because the thing which we are subtracting is fifty percent of the last thing we got. So if the last thing we got is zero, we'll not be subtracting. We'll be subtracting zero from zero. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so it should go through zero. This is kind of a limit, right? Yeah, let me not even pass zero because we cannot subtract zero. It's okay, it's okay. Leave about it. This is okay. That is not the point here. The point here is what this is kind of a sequence, right? Are you able to see this as a sequence or a kind of a limit? Yes, yes. Right. So after, like, if you if you are doing this small decrement here, I will say, and you are reaching or you are trying to convert initial. Usually, how how will uh, how will you do? You just do with the single numbers, right? Here, what we are trying to do is with the two dimensions, but this is the kind of a limit here, right? You are you are actually converging to some point. Also, this will be true for multi-dimensions also, right? Here, you can see uh, this limit in two dimensions. You can see this uh, in three dimensions as well, right? So, uh, okay, the answer might be anything. Like I think it's 
zero zero because it it will maybe pass through zero zero or it will be very close to zero zero. <laughs> That's not uh, the discussion here. But it's not going to definitely one three and one three is not there, right? Because one three was started there. It's not going to converge at one three, correct? It is decre it's decreasing. That means option is not there. What about one by two, one by six? It's not going to converge there also, right? It's point five and point one six six, right? So we are actually not going towards that point also because we are decreasing uh, below that uh, point as well. So, uh, so, so where uh, so does this algorithm converge? First question is yes, right? Yes, sir. Equation y equal to three x, sir. Huh? This line equation y equal to three x. Y equals to three x. So why, if it is y equals to three, then definitely it will go through zero zero, right? Yes, yes sir. Uh, it's path through answer. Correct. Right. So y equals to three x. Ah, yes, yes. Y equals to x. Correct. So uh, this will go through zero zero. That means it will converge to zero zero, uh, not the other points. So this is a kind of a limit, but you are able to see this limit in two dimensions. That is the point of it. This is basically a gradient descent algorithm. We'll see that uh, in detail uh, when it will come. I think it will come in week eight or week nine. There I'll just uh, explain you better uh, in terms of you know uh, the algorithm. But you can just understand at this moment you can understand this as kind of a limit, right? Uh, this is kind of a sequence, and we are uh, converging to that uh, sequence, fine. Okay. Uh, let's see about question number nine. So we'll uh, uh, solve this question nine, and then we'll uh, stop here. Okay. So what is question number nine? Uh, this is the matrix A, and this uh, B is the system A x equals to B consistent. How to find uh, this so system of linear equation be consistent? Augmented matrix Gaussian elimination. Gaussian elimination and or you can find a rank and you can okay so we'll uh, use that approach itself here okay can you tell me the matrix augmented one directly sir one 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 two one one two 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 one So this is the augmented matrix. So we'll do some operations here. Uh, the uh, so first, this is a pure trait, right? first pure. Trait. <coughs> so I'll make uh, the this two as zero. So how to make this two as zero? Uh, we'll do the row operations. So which row operation is suitable here is R two will change to R two minus R one, and R three will change to R three minus. R one, right? <coughs> so if I do this uh, operations here, one minus one, uh, this side also one, zero zero here. So basically, we have to uh, come to the row echelon form, and then uh, we'll see see the rank of the two matrices, uh, the matrix of A, the rank of matrix A, and the rank of augmented matrix A. If the if these two ranks are same, then this is the consistent. System of linear equation. If the two the ranks are not same, then it's inconsistent, right? Okay. So uh, what will happen here? Uh, one uh, minus of minus one. This is two, and here three, right? Uh, here it is zero, and here it is two. Two. Correct. Okay. What is the next uh, thing? Make this as pure. So uh, I'll do one more one more operation here. Is I'll just uh, divide it, right? So R two will be changed as R two divided by two. So this will one minus one one because I I wanted to make this as one. Okay, zero one zero zero three two. The next operation will be what? Uh, making this pure. So I need to get into the row echelon form. So I need to make this as this three as zero. So R three will change to R three minus three times R two, right? Yes. So this will become one zero zero minus one 
Okay, so you can see what is the rank of A? Two. Two. What is the rank of A? B. Three. Three. Is it correct? So is this a consistent system of linear equation or inconsistent? So uh, the answer to this is no. Done. Just find it. Are, are you guys able to say this properly? Okay. Yes. When when the rank of A is equal to rank of, then this is consistent uh, system of linear equation. And when the rank of A is not equal to rank of A, B, it is stopped. Okay. So okay. So we'll stop here. Uh, we'll see the problem. Sir, can you discuss question number ten a little bit, sir? Yes, sir. I also okay, have anyone. Okay, then 10 will do. Using the list square uh, approximation, find the length of the projection of the P uh, of P onto the column space of A. Okay, this is related to nine. Which one? Ninth one, right? Yeah. yeah. The projection okay. First of all, you have to find uh, the column space of A, right? What is the column space of A? Column space of A, uh, are you guys able to understand what is column space of A? Isn't it just A? It is the. It's not. It's a, it's a linear combination of. Yeah, both are independent, so combination. So, of yeah. Is. So here in this case, it is. Uh, it is uh, both this columns, right? Or S A. I can say the span of these two vectors 1, 1, 1 and minus 1, 1, 2. I need to find what? Projection vector of, projection of B on on the A. B of B onto the column space of A. Okay. So, so it is inconsistent. So we find through least square approximation. We can find the least square approximation as well. Uh, but uh, okay, I'll not go into you know the derivation or something. Uh, but uh, what is the uh, projection matrix here you know that yes a transpose uh, a, a, a transpose by a, a, a transpose okay. by so a we have to go through the linear uh, the least square method and the solution will be what a transpose a x hat is equals to a transpose b right this is the base solution we should have right correct mm. yes yeah. sir and the projection matrix will be what a x hat. Is it correct? Huh? Or or I'll say not A x hat. Okay, I'll, I'll just uh, write it down. A into A transpose A inverse into A transpose. Is it <laughs> is it correct? That is what A x hat actually, right? Okay. Yes, sir. This this is fine, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you are confused, then I'll just okay. So for everyone, I'll just write it down. Um, so the base solution for this problem is this kind of problem is uh, by least square method is this one, right? A transpose A x hat. General solution. So what is the difference between this process and uh, when we are doing okay. finding projects okay. and matrix and projecting beyond projects and matrix? Sir? One minute. One minute. First of all, you see, see this is AX equals to B. This is our uh, normal system of linear equations, right? Yes. yes sir. Uh, and through which we try to find uh, the solution for it. OK? But when we do not have the solution, and when, when it will happen, when the uh, system of linear equation is not consistent. So we try mm -hmm. to find the approximate solution to it, right? Yes. So uh, the approximation solution to it is given by uh, pro projecting uh, the column space of uh, that matrix onto the onto B, right? So okay, so you have some derivations there. Through that, you will find uh, this solution, right? You can find that uh, derivation, I think, in the lectures or somewhere. If you need it, maybe if you if you want me to solve it, I'll solve it maybe after the quiz. Sir? No, this because it will take a lot of time. That, uh, Excuse me, sir. Yes. So, will the formulas be there in the paper? No. 
because in the pyqs it was there uh but in mlf quiz one i uh, we don't I, i didn't give any formulas <laughs> no need of uh, you know mugging of all any any formula anyway actually it's not uh, that difficult okay okay so uh Okay, fine. So uh, a x equals to b. Oh, but the formulas are not given in MLF quiz. Okay, that is uh, there. So I'll just not go through the theory part of it. Uh, this is the base solution for uh, our problem of least squares. A transpose a of x hat is equals to a transpose b. So what is x hat? Then x hat will be what? A transpose a inverse. So a transpose b by a uh, a inverse. A transpose A inverse. A transpose B, right? So if I, uh, uh, I can I can uh, write in another term as what? Uh, or then what is the projection matrix? Projection matrix is what? The A on X. X hat, right? Yeah. Okay. A projection matrix, or I'll say, what is the projection? This is the projection, right? A x hat. Ah, projection. Yeah. So the projection will be like this. So A into this term. So which is A transpose A inverse A transpose B. This is the projection, right? And in uh, now in our case, what I have to find is this one, right? Yeah. You have to find the projection only, right? Yes. Correct? Yeah. Okay. So what is the matrix A? One 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 minus one one two minus one one two and uh, one one three. three. Yes, one one three. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, First, okay. Now, how will you solve this? Is maybe I'll try to find a transpose a first, right, and then find the inverse of it. Sir, huh? sir, in lecture x x hat is uh, sir has written that a transpose b upon a transpose a. Ha, huh, that is also fine. That is the same thing, right? It's like a transpose b upon a transpose a. So if we, upon means what? It's like In in term when you deal with matrices, uh, then it will become inverse only, right? Okay. Correct, right? This is inverse. Sir, inverse and dividing are same thing. In matrices, we don't divide it, right? We you cannot divide a matrix by a matrix, right? Okay, sir. In uh, when sir so was written inverse. has but written a transpose means he is taking inverse. But it was one only one vector. Vector, vector. When it is when vector, you can do that operation. When it is a vector, right? When it is a vector, then this a into a transpose b upon a transpose a. So it, when it's a vector, right? Uh, when a is some vector, let's say one, three, two. In that case, a transpose b, a will give me a scalar value, right? Because yes, it's a square of that vector only, right? A transpose okay, is what? This is, is space, value. right? Sir. So this is this is not ah uh, this is a space, right? It's it's a, uh, it, a transpose a when it uh, when it is a matrix, I cannot divide it by right. Yes, it is not scalar. So when it is a vector, you can write it down like this. But when it comes to the matrix, you just have to do uh, inverse of it, right? That's what I'm. Uh, maybe if you guys. Have any doubts regarding yes, this? Sir, now, now area? I understand, sir. I am confused in these two things. Okay, okay fine, fine. I, I, maybe, maybe after the quiz also, I will just give you the theory on uh, projection, uh, projection. But okay, currently you just understand this. You, uh, if you remember that formula, also that's not a problem. A transpose B upon A transpose A, right? Yes, sir. No, I I know the derivation, ah. sir. I am missing that this we are projecting this on service space, so. Correct. Okay, so uh, just remember this one and just make this as inverse. You'll get the same thing. Hmm? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, do I need to do these calculations? No, sir. Now uh, we can. All these calculations. Uh, maybe no, sir. No, right? 
Sir, uh, can you like I can uh, tell you that A, A transpose A and A transpose B, but can you like uh, help me find the length of the? Ah, okay. You you, you just give me the this projection. Or, so, or, okay. A A transpose A is uh, three two two six. A transpose A will be okay. A transpose A will be see this is two cross three matrix. Yeah. And then three cross two, so I'll get a two by two matrix. Two, two right? by two matrix, yes. Yeah. Okay, so two by two matrix will be three, two. Huh? Here two. Yes. Huh. And then two, two, six, six. Two? six. Okay. And then I think it is three six. A transpose B will be uh huh. two by one matrix. Uh, five six. Okay. How do I get the length? Now? So what is a first? A one one. You have to do uh, one more calculation. Okay. So I do that from here. It is two. Uh, so this is two cross two matrix. This is two cross one matrix. Mm. So I'll get two cross one here, right? So uh, I I'm just multiplying these two matrices. Okay. So first row and into the first column is fifteen plus twelve. How much it is? Twenty seven. Why? Why? We have to take inverse. No? Inverse. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I thought it's okay. Inverse is okay. First, then I'll just have to do inverse first. What is the determinant of it? Eighteen minus four. Fourteen. 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 So one by fourteen, right? Yeah. One by fourteen. Uh, six. Plus six, six three. Minus two minus two, right? Yeah. This is the inverse. This is a transpose a inverse, and then I have to multiply with five six, right? To get yes. A transpose b. Okay. So it is one by fourteen. Uh, so twelve. Uh, so thirty minus twelve. It is eighteen. And uh, minus ten and eighteen is uh, uh, minus 10 plus eight, right? And then I have to multiply this with a, a is one 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 minus one one two, and this is one by fourteen. I put it outside eighteen eight. So if I do this calculation, is three cross two. This is two cross one. So I'll get three cross one. So I'll get basically a vector, right? And that is correct. So it's one by fourteen. Uh, eighteen minus eight is ten. Uh, eighteen plus eight is twenty-six. Eighteen plus sixteen is thirty. So forty-four, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is my projection vector. So my projection vector is. One by fourteen, uh, ten, twenty-six, forty-four, and this one by fourteen. So if I go inside, fourteen, right? We will write it properly. So ten by four. Okay, I'll just write down uh, in terms of decimals. So ten by fourteen is basically uh, five by seven. Twenty-six by fourteen is thirteen by seven. Forty-four uh, by like twenty-two by seven. Okay, the length of this vector, length of vector, so length of p. I'll just write the norm of it to be root of five by seven square, right? Plus thirteen by seven square plus two by Uh, square, so basically it is twenty-five plus one sixty-nine plus four forty-four. I guess uh, just take uh, to twenty-two square. I guess. is it correct? Twenty-two into twenty-two. Sir, two. Four eighty-four. Okay, okay. Four eighty-four. The root divided by seven. Is it correct? So you just do the calculation. So four eighty four. Huh? What is it? Okay. Nothing. So. Okay. Just somebody just do the calculation for me. Three point one four. Uh. Huh? Final answer. No, no. The the numerator. Numerator. 
How much? Six seventy eight divided by seven. Okay, so just find out the value. We'll get the length of P. Hmm? Three point seven one. Three point seven. Okay. Understand who asked me this question? I don't know the name, uh, but do you understand the procedure? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you got this vector. It's normal thing. Normal. Normally, just how do you find the length of the vector is the same thing you have to do. Here. Because the projection, uh, when you get the projection, it is a vector, mm -hmm. and you just have to find the length of the vector. And length of the vector usually uh, will be find out by like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, this is uh, five by seven minus zero to the whole square. Thirteen minus thirteen by seven minus zero to, because we we have this coordinate system at zero zero, right? Generally, vector is represented by like this, right? Mm -hmm. From the coordinate. So this is this is the point. Right, so uh, these are the coordinates like 5 by 7, 13 by 7, and 22 by 7. So the distance between the origin, which is uh, currently here, it is 0, 0, 0. The distance between these two points is calculated. Generally, how do you find this is Euclidean distance, right? Yes, sir. So this is this is nothing but the Euclidean distance. Mm. So uh, if you have if you are calculating the uh, distance between two vectors, suppose this is this is another vector, how do you do that? You just subtract x1 minus x2, like x uh, or whatever, like x x1 minus uh, or x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square plus y3 minus y2 square, like this, right? Here in this case, when the single vector is represented uh, through the origin, so you are just finding the distance of this point from the origin, and this is this let's say this x1 minus zero. So we are just ignoring that zero here. Okay, this is not a different formula, it's just a Euclidean distance formula, right? Okay, I think that's uh, done. So, uh, maybe, maybe we'll meet uh, next Saturday and we'll solve the remaining problem, right? Until that point of time, we we'll just, uh, uh, just do, do we have one more mock? No, no, that is the only one mock. I see. Okay. Because now questions on regression. Uh, sir, the graded assignment for solution is actually not up uploaded. <coughs> if you have the link, can you attach it in the chat box? What <laughs> matter? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So sorry. Uh, you just can you just uh, repeat it once more? Uh, yeah, sir. The graded assignment for solutions are not uploaded on the drive under supplementary contents. So if you have the link, can you please put it in the chat box? Uh, link I do not have currently. So I'll ask the team to upload it tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Tomorrow okay. morning they'll upload. I'll just uh, tell them to add into the drive. Okay. okay. I hope you guys enjoyed the session. Uh, we'll uh, meet on Saturday. Uh, sir, just one query. Yeah. Uh, can you please elaborate which week will be uh, means week wise? Uh... <laughs> I told right. I think it's uh, uh, weightage wise, right? Weightage. I, uh, I think it's equal weightage to every week. Okay. Uh, but maybe I'll confirm you uh, on Saturday once. <laughs> but, uh, it's uh, for me. I think because. I've done that paper, like I completed the paper way back, so I, I just forgot what is the weightage, actual actual weightage. Okay. If you need, I'll just uh, tell you that on Saturday. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Fine. Thanks. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye, sir. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good night.